Question number 12 from kinetic theory of gas. A closed container having one mole of hydrogen and one mole of helium at temperature T. And we got to assume ideal behavior. Under this situation, these are the four different things which are asked. The first one is average energy per mole of mixture. There are many approaches how you can do this. And let me follow one, the average energy. So for that, what I'll do is, let me find degree of freedom equivalent, which is N1, F1. So that would be 1. And the degree of freedom for diatomic is quite obviously 5. Plus N2, F2, that is 3. By N1 plus N2, that's 2. And we get the equivalent degree of freedom to be 4. Now, if I get equivalent degree of freedom as 4, CV equivalent would be RF by 2, so that would be 2R. And I know CV equivalent, so I can find average energy per mole of the mixture. We know that energy would be NCVT and per mole required, that would be CV multiplied by T, so that would be 2R into T, so this is correct. Next is speed of sound in the mixture and speed of sound in helium, we got to find the ratio. We know speed of sound in any gaseous medium is given by root of gamma R T by M. So R and T is same. So all I require now is I need to calculate gamma equivalent for the mixture and M equivalent for the mixture. So gamma equivalent would be 1 plus 2 by F equivalent, which is 4. So that would be 1 plus 1 by 2, that comes out to be 3 by 2. M equivalent, that will be N1, M1 plus N2, M2. This is hydrogen, this is helium. By N1 plus N2, that's 2. So this comes out to be 3. And of course, for the case of helium, gamma helium would be 1 plus 2 by F, which is 3. So that's 5 by 3 and mass of helium when it comes in the form of molecular mass that would be 4 gram. So if we use this particular expression we would be getting second also as correct option. And the ratio of RMS speed of helium at term to RMS speed of hydrogen molecule can be easily calculated by using the expression VRMS is root of 3RT by M. And right here you could see that 3 R they are constant and even temperature is constant. So quite obviously the ratio of RMS speed plugging the value of M would give 1 by root 2. So for question number 12 the correct options are A, B and D. Now let's move to question number 13. Question number 13 is a simple question from current electricity. It says in an aluminum bar of square cross section, 7 cross 7 millimeter, the aluminum bar, a square hole is drilled and is filled with iron, which is very distinctly shown. And the cross section of this is 4 millimeter square. Resistivity of aluminum is given, resistivity of iron is given, and we need to calculate resistance between P and Q, this phase and this phase of composite bar. So now, if you see R1, where 1 is aluminum, would be rho length by area of aluminum. And the area of the aluminum phase has to be taken as 45, because 7 cross 7, 49 is this complete area minus a 4, that would be 45. And length is given 50 meter, resistivity is given there. Similarly, resistance of iron would be rho of iron length by area of iron. Once you calculate these two, the net resistance across phase P and Q, these two resistance would be in parallel. So that would be R1, R2 by R1 plus R2 requires a bit of calculation, but then you would be landing up to option number B. So question number 13 has correct option as B. 
Now we'll move to question number 14. Question number 14 from modern physics again and it's been set from photoelectric effect where lambda is the photon wavelength and V naught is the stopping potential. And we got to see the correct option for the graph of V naught versus lambda and V naught versus 1 by lambda. The relation we know is E V naught is H C by lambda minus of H C by lambda naught. First, if we go with option number C and D, 1 by lambda is along the x-axis. So this would be E V naught is H C 1 by lambda minus H C by lambda naught. So this is y-axis, this is x-axis. So I'll be getting an equation of straight line in the pattern y equals to mx minus C. So therefore, for the graph of V naught versus 1 by lambda, that would correctly represent option number C. Now if we go for the graph of V naught versus lambda, so that comes V naught versus lambda, that would be a curve and quite obviously if you differentiate it then you could easily find that the correct relation would be A or even simply by virtue of experience you could see that with increasing lambda V naught decreases and at lambda equals to lambda naught the value of stopping potential becomes zero or else if you want to be certain enough go for the first derivative and second derivative and using all those concepts of graph transformation and graph formation you would be correctly landing to option number E. So that was with question number 14 and now we'll move to question number 15.